Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. The Citrus Bowl gives us a battle between two teams that were both the runner-up in their respective conference. Number 17, LSU, lost the SEC Championship game to Georgia, but enters this game at 9-4, while Purdue lost the Big Ten Championship to Michigan and enters the game at 8 and five. This is a very, very intriguing matchup, guys, but unfortunately one that is plagued by tons and tons of opt-outs from both teams. And we're here to break down everything you need to know for this battle between the Tigers and the Boilermakers and, of course, share our official prediction. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're so glad that you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks, over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Again, we have some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country over there. You do not want to miss out, guys. We can guarantee you will win big-time money there, uh, whether it's with our holiday special package, which gives you the rest of the college football bowl game picks, along with every single NFL playoff pick, or even one of the larger packages that get you content year-round. So go check it out. The link, again, down in the description below. So let's take a look at this game. Let, let, let's take a look. We've got... Two teams here that are definitely hungry for a bowl win. They want this bowl win bad, but both teams in a very odd state. You look at LSU, first year under Brian Kelly. Well, you know, things considered a pretty solid year. Won the SEC West his first season. Did it with, with a 9-3 and three record, but still won the SEC West. Top 20 team entering the bowl game. And luckily for LSU fans, it's not necessarily a big bowl game. Brian Kelly typically struggling in those during his time at Notre Dame, but I think he can win a Citrus Bowl. Good news for the Tigers is that Kayshawn Boutte and Jaden Daniels both announced they're going to come back for 2023. So they should be playing in this Citrus Bowl. That's huge. Huge for this game, but obviously huge for next year as the Tigers are looking to defend their SEC West title. They're averaging over 32 points per game, over 260 passing yards per game, and over 180 rushing yards per game. This is a very balanced LSU offense and one that can beat you both through the air and on the ground, but it all starts with that quarterback in Jaden Daniels who's thrown for over 2,700 yards, 16 touchdowns, just three interceptions, and has also rushed for 818 yards and 11 touchdowns. He's the leading rusher for LSU this season. Uh, we know he kind of got a little banged up in the SEC Championship game against Georgia. We expect him to play in this game against Purdue. If he's healthy, watch out because he is tough to stop. Look at Purdue, guys. Unfortunately for them, they are depleted across the board. Uh, Jeff Brom, first off, their head coach, leaving to take the job at Louisville, his alma mater. Uh, and then you look at all the opt-outs that they have. All the opt-outs that they have. They are losing uh, their starting left guard in Spencer Holstead. They're losing their star quarterback in Aiden O'Connell, who threw for over 3,400 yards and 22 touchdowns. They're losing their number one wide receiver in Charlie Dr Jones, who had over 1,300 reception yards and 12 touchdowns. And they're losing their second top pass catcher and tight end Payne Durham, who had 560 yards and eight touchdowns. So you're losing your top two pass catchers. You're losing your starting quarterback. You're losing a starting left guard. Your head coach is gone. This is a skeleton crew offensively for Purdue. And it's not what you want to see from a team that was averaging over 28 points per game and averaging over 280 passing yards per game. Those numbers are all going to take a massive hit, and you needed full strength here to try to make, be able to match LSU offensively step for step in this game. Uh, it does look that Austin Burton is going to get the start for Purdue in this game. Uh, he's going to get the nod here. He did start earlier in the year in a 28-26 win over Florida Atlantic. He threw for 166 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. So he has started a full game from start to finish, uh, which is a huge, huge benefit uh, to uh, this P Purdue team, at least getting someone in there that has had his feet wet before and gives him an opportunity to maybe go out there and win this game. But obviously a, a lot of key losses for a Purdue offense. It's been so much fun to watch all year long. Not going to look anything like it uh, when they play on January 2nd. The defense for LSU, you would think, is going to be licking their chops at this thing. Hey, we've got a skeleton crew of offense at Purdue. We're going to eat them alive. Well, not so fast. LSU is giving up a little less than 24 points per game. Not too bad. They're giving up just 209 passing yards per game and 152 on the ground, which typically against any other opponent would be major, majorly concerning. Over 150 yards per game on the ground, that's, that's bad. But Purdue was only averaging 123 rushing yards per game, and they're not a team that wants to run the ball that often. So that's a benefit for LSU especially since they're going to be without some top players on defense, including B.J. Ojolari, their cornerback, and Makai Garner, 
Another defensive end and Jacqueline Roy. Another defensive end and Ali Gay. All those guys are gone. So the front seven for LSU, especially that defensive line, very depleted entering this game, uh, which is not good in the sense they're probably not going to create much pressure on Austin Burton, which you would like to do against such a, an inexperienced uh, quarterback. Uh, but obviously, a, a, a bit of a concern as well is Purdue tries to change their game plan a little bit and try to run the ball. They can get through that defensive line. Purdue could actually change their tactics and actually have more success offensively than we think. The Tigers do have 25 sacks on the year. Not a bad bar. They do have 17 takeaways on the year. But you look at the numbers, again, the last two games that LSU has played against Texas A&M and Georgia, both losses there, they have 274 rushing yards to the Aggies and 255 rushing yards to Georgia. The rushing defense has been very suspect. It's been very concerning. Uh, Purdue is luckily not a team that wants to hammer the ball up front, but if they choose to go that route, LSU has to be prepared to stop it. They have to be prepared to stop it. So it's one kind of storyline to watch here. Purdue doesn't run often, but if they do, they could end up gashing LSU more than you think. Purdue defensively, uh, not, not too great defensively, but not bad. 24.6 points per game, that's what they're giving up. It's about 214 through the air, 136 on the ground, but they're down a couple key players and staff members as well. They're going to be without their defensive coordinator and Ron English, who went with uh, Jeff Brom to Louisville. They're going to be without their top cornerback and Corey Trice as well. So two big losses uh, for this Purdue defense, especially going up against what we expect to be a relatively full-strength LSU offense. You look at some of the games that Purdue has played in. Uh, they are 8-5. and five. Uh, they, they played Michigan, uh, obviously, in that Big Ten championship game where they gave up over 225 rushing yards. Against Iowa, they gave up 184 rushing yards. Against Wisconsin, they gave up 178 rushing yards. All of those were losses for the Boilermakers. And, and it kind of goes to the theme we were talking about with LSU. The inability to stop the run has kind of been concerning for Purdue. It's been leaky as of late. This light, late half of the season, Purdue has struggled to stop the run. If they're unable to do that, they're going to struggle to stop a dual-threat quarterback and a mobile quarterback in Jaden Daniels and obviously the trio of running backs that LSU has behind him. So Purdue has to be able to be conscious of that, but also be conscious of that Jaden Daniels is more than capable of winning the game through the air, especially without their top cornerback in that secondary. Yes, the Boilermakers have 28 sacks on the year, could create a little bit of pressure. Yes, they have 19 takeaways, so both teams do a great job of forcing turnovers. But one, will Purdue be able to capitalize? And two, will they be able to even be able to get them? That's the million-dollar question here. So overall, guys, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious who we're going to side with here. I'm all over LSU in this game. And it's really hard not to be. I mean, both teams, credit to them both, have had a phenomenal season. Credit to getting into their conference championship games. That's no small feat. But you look at Purdue. Uh, the offense has been their strength all year long, and they are down so many key players. They're down their starting quarterback. They're down a, a key offensive lineman. They're down their top two pass catchers. You can't expect them to go out there and just light this LSU defense up, an LSU secondary that really hasn't been all that bad this season. So you factor that in on top of losing your head coach, you lose your defensive coordinator. So much going on with this Purdue program. I'm not expecting a super strong outing from the Boilermakers in the Citrus Bowl. LSU, I think, wins this game. They win it by at least 10 points, and they carry a lot of momentum into 2023. A lot of momentum into 2023. A 10-win season and Brian Kelly's first year in the future looking very, very bright in Death Valley. So, guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and, of course, check out everything down in that description below, including our expert picks over on their website, thegridironexpert.com. Uh, guys, we have some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the country over there. You do not want to miss out on the opportunity to sign up and make some big-time money with us today. So go check it out. The link, again, down in the description below. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.